Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Fight Your Way Fit, and this video will be a little different than my usual videos, as in this video I want to tell you guys all about my very own personal hero. And I've known a lot of brave fighters in my day, and this guy is definitely up there with some of the bravest fighters that I've ever known. And I wasn't sure that I was going to make this video, but there's definitely some lessons here that can be valuable for your health and for your life. And so I pushed back some other videos and I decided to make this one right away. On this channel, I've used my friend Fisk in multiple videos as he was very knowledgeable about boxing and he just loved the sport. And he was more than just a friend, he was really like a brother to me. And if you've watched those other videos, and I will leave a link to one in the description below, you'll notice that I mentioned that Fisk was diagnosed with a severely weakened heart about six years ago. And then two years ago, when he went in to have the battery change on his defibrillator, well there he got hit with more devastating news that along with his failing heart, he also had leukemia, which if you don't know is cancer of the blood. So he had this tremendous fight on his hands and on not just one, but two fronts with two life-threatening illnesses. And I posted in the other video as well that last year at the Super Bowl, due to both illnesses, he dropped down to just over 100 pounds. And again, this is a guy that previously weighed a solid 200 pounds. And these illnesses were just devastating. But being a fighter, he fought and he fought hard. And every night on the cancer ward in the hospital, while all the other patients were sleeping, Fisk was fighting his way to his feet. He was just trying to learn to stand again and then walk again, which he did, and he was getting better and better by the day. And in the video in the description below, we ran the Spartan race together, just about a month after his release from the intensive care unit of the hospital. In fact, just a few weeks ago, we weighed ourselves at the gym, where he had regained pretty much all of the weight he had lost fighting cancer. And he was back to lifting some heavier weights and his cardio was improving all of the time. And he was doing so well. So he had cancer on the ropes and he was getting ready to set up the knockout shot. Things were looking so good and we were making a ton of plans for this summer. But sometimes in life, just like in boxing, you get hit with a shot that you don't see coming. And unfortunately, it's those shots that usually do the most amount of damage. And I'm saddened to report that his weakened heart failed and he passed away while he slept last week. And my intent with this video is not to solicit any sort of sympathy from you or make you feel bad because I don't want that. And I know Fisk definitely wouldn't have wanted that but is to use this moment to maybe remind us all of some things that we all too often have a tendency to forget. And so I'll share with you a few things that I've learned from my friend, especially over the last year, as I flip through some social media from his Facebook. And as we go along, I'll make a few suggestions and maybe these lessons will help you in your health or your life goals. And if they do help someone out there, then I'm glad in some strange way that a part of him will continue to live on. And I'm happy with that. What I'll talk about first is what I mentioned in that video below. And this actually helped me out quite a bit in both my training and in my life because Fisk never allowed himself to get overwhelmed. Even with all of the obstacles that he was facing, we all have goals. But when we look towards the finish line and what it's going to take to accomplish those goals, it seems so far away. And we have a tendency to get overwhelmed and talk ourselves into just giving up before we even start. But Fisk learned to look at things differently. Sure, he'd say the destination may be many, many miles long. Yep, it's far away, but I don't need to worry about that. All I need to worry about is right now. And all I need to do is just this very first mile. That's it, just this one, just this first one, you see, if I can do that, well, then I'm on my way. And when I get there, then I'll worry about the next and then what lies ahead. But for now, it's just this one mile. It was so simple, yet so brilliant. He reminded me of a calculus teacher that explains derivatives and integrals and how the greatest journey can be carved up into tiny little pieces where you can stay focused on just one piece at a time, just the one. Yet when you add up all of those little pieces, everything starts to take shape and you're starting to get somewhere. So just to give you a quick example, if you're on a diet, don't think about eight weeks, six weeks, or two weeks away, or don't even think about this weekend. You just get through today and worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. I know that I started doing this for my cardio, and you've seen in a few videos now where I break up my workout into 30 second or one minute intervals. So I'm not overwhelmed by doing a whole 20 minutes of intense cardio. I'm just hanging in there for that 30 seconds or a minute. Yep, that's it. That's all I'm thinking of. Then I'll worry about the next 30 seconds when I get there. And my brain stays motivated that way because it's easier to stay focused on those 30 second blocks. It seems so silly, but it's so much easier on the mind. 
yet the battle is always won or lost in your mind. And so it helps me to get that workout in. So it really does work. Another thing that I learned from Fisk is to stop wasting your energy worrying about things that you can't control. And I really struggle with this one, but I'm trying. Some things are just out of your control. I remember sitting in the hospital with Fisk and they told him that they had to remove his spleen in the morning and that due to his health condition, he had like a 50-50 chance of making it through that surgery the following day. So that's 50-50 of seeing tomorrow. I would have honestly been overcome with fear and panic, but he wasn't, he was very calm. He was only concerned about telling his two boys because he loved them dearly and he wanted them to be all right. Now, I don't know what I would be thinking. I certainly wouldn't be so stoic. I know I'd be mad or crying or fearful, I don't know. But Fisk always had a saying, it's going to be what it's going to be, he'd say. There are certain things that I can control and I do my best with those. Yet there are certain things that no matter how much I worry or no matter how much I get worked up, there are just certain things that are out of my hands. And worrying about those things isn't gonna do a darn thing. So he wouldn't worry about those things that he couldn't affect the outcome of. Instead, in his day-to-day -day life, he would turn his focus on the things that he could change. And that is where he would spend his energy. And I guess he realized that you only have so much energy. Only so much energy, so please spend it wisely. Just so you know you only have a finite amount of energy. And you know even the sun only has a finite amount. And if you're spending all of your energy on this, well then guess what? You're spending less of it on that. And maybe that is where your focus should be. How many of us waste energy on things that we shouldn't? Especially when it comes to wasting energy on certain emotions. Many of us waste our energy on emotions like anger and hate that do nothing productive at all for us. They really don't. There is never anything gained by such negativity. And trust me, I work here on YouTube where I've seen that people can be absolutely brutal. But there's nothing to be gained by hate and anger. And when I think of it, my boy Fisk got along with everyone. It didn't matter gender, race, or religion. Life is obviously too short to be consumed or being angry or hating people that look different or believe some different things than you do. Because the thing is that of course we all have differences. And some people may have a different way of thinking or perhaps a different belief system. And you know what, it doesn't really matter. Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever. Because when it comes to the answers, who's right? Who knows the answers? I know that I don't. There are much wiser men than I out there that have pondered this, and yet they don't know either. But I'll tell you what I do know. In fact, it's something we all know. We pretty much all agree, regardless of religion or race, we all know what the best things in human beings are. We all know. We all know what the best things are. Justice, empathy, patience, tolerance, curiosity, wonder, compassion, kindness, love. Be those things. Be those things, my friend, and whatever God you happen to believe in will respect that. And even if you don't happen to believe in a God or anything at all, well then those who live beside you will respect that. And again, there is nothing to be gained by being divisive and angry. In the end, nothing. For whatever you do believe, one truth is constant, that you are alive right here and right now and you only have so much energy. So please try and use that energy to become the best version of you. That's what's expected of you, so that you can live this one life to its fullest. And don't waste your precious energy on being negative. What I've really also learned as of late is that tomorrow is promised to no one. You could be as healthy as an ox and have an accident and still not see tomorrow. You never know. Maybe you're like me. I know that I have a really bad habit of procrastinating. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start eating better tomorrow. I'll call my dad next week. I'll see my friends next month. Or I'll take that trip that I always wanted to take someday. Sure, someday. Well, there's that old saying, which is still pretty wise. And don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And Fisk would often urge me to start maximizing my time and to get my butt in gear. Speaking of time, we live in a funny era where we all spend so much time looking at our phones yet we often forget to use what it was originally intended for. I stopped directly talking to people. And you know what, I was thinking of that while I was at the funeral, because there I'm seeing guys that I used to be close with and I haven't seen for 20 years. And I was saying to myself, now why does it take an event like this, an event like this to reach out and reconnect? I don't know, but going forward, I'm definitely gonna try and do better. So spend your time wisely but also give some back. Fisk loved football and he knew the game in and out. 
and he coached kids football right up until last year. Even though he knew that his time may be limited, he was still willing to spend it where he knew it would count. He was also the first person to take time and help a stranger. For example, even at the gym, he would give a free boxing lesson or advice to help anyone. And he never expected anything in return. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and try and be the next Mother Teresa, but if you can help someone out here and there, well then why not? You want to leave your mark on this world? Well, it won't be by the material things that you acquire and leave behind for the tax man, I promise you, but by the relationships that you have formed and the lives that you have influenced. Also, you need to be willing to take a risk. And this took me a long time to learn, a long time. I always played it safe when I was younger, especially when I was in my 20s. I was afraid to do new things. Perhaps I was afraid of change. But if you step outside of your box, you may just surprise yourself. And Fisk was so full of life always just so full of life and he was always up for anything. He traveled across the world from Morocco to Trinidad through the US. He even rode across Canada by motorcycle twice. And I really loved and admired that about him. He was always so enthusiastic. He was just a fun guy and it was contagious. And before I knew it, he had me flying and jumping out of planes and riding motorcycles or getting on stage perhaps to sing karaoke or even walking over there to ask that pretty girl to dance. He had me put myself out there. Now again, I'm not talking about going kamikaze. You don't need to jump out of a plane or do something that you feel is dangerous, but just be willing to take a risk and step out of your comfort zone and try new things. What's the worst that could happen, Fisk would say? The worst case scenario is that you now have some cool stories of how you totally messed up and flopped. And I have tons of these, and you know what? They're the best stories of all. So sometimes you may have to take a little risk just to keep life exciting. Finally, always fight, no matter the odds. Laying down and quitting is never an option. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. So you need to try your best to hang in there and try to find out. Fighting is always the better option in my opinion than just curling up into a ball. Even if you lose, even if you lose. When I say these words, it reminds me of the story of Pandora's box. And everyone knows the story, of course, that Pandora was given this box that she was told to never open. And of course, her curiosity got the best of her. And she opened the box and released all of the evils into the world. And once they were out there, they can never be put back into the box. Now, people equate that story with being overcome by curiosity, or that once something's out there, it's out there, and it's very difficult to contain it and put it back into the box. But they don't remember the end of the story, that there is something more powerful than all the evils in the world still left in the box. What was in the box? Hope is what was left in the box. As long as you fight, you have hope, and you have a chance to fight all of the evils in the world. Fisk always fought, and he always had hope, in fact, he gave me hope, and instead of just waiting for the end, he was preoccupied with the fight. And I often ask the question why in many of my videos. Why was Fisk allowed to get better this past year from cancer? Why was he able to beat the cancer just to succumb to the heart condition and have it take his life? Well, I like to believe that over the past year, he was able to get out of the hospital and spend some extra time with those that he loved. And he was also able to motivate and inspire a lot of people. I also smile because I know Fisk. And last year in the hospital, from his hospital bed, we watched the New England Patriots win the Super Bowl together. And don't get me wrong, he totally respected the skills of Tom Brady and New England. But being a lifelong Philly fan, seeing them win yet another title was not his idea of the perfect Super Bowl. But this year, he was out of the hospital and feeling great. And he was able to watch his team, the Philadelphia Eagles, win the big game. And he was over the moon about it and seeing how happy he was really does make me smile. A lot of people say this about somebody who has passed away, but I really mean this. Fisk was just an extraordinary guy. He was amazing because he was always so positive no matter what the situation. And like I said, he was always so full of life. He always had everyone around him smiling and laughing and feeling great. And like I said before, he had a positive impact on a lot of people. And that is the legacy that he leaves behind, positivity. He made me promise that if anything happened to him that I wasn't to feel sad, but to remember the fun times. And I'm having trouble, but I'm doing my best to do that. Because we always had a ton of fun together and he really did improve the lives of everyone that was lucky enough to have known him. And I'm going to miss him terribly. And if you can learn anything from Fisk, is that the time that we all have here is very precious. And if you can, just try and do your best to make it enjoyable for yourself and for all those around you. 
So next week, we'll be back to our regular style of videos. Till then, this has been Mike Gales for Fight Your Way Fit. And I hope that you are well and that you're having an amazing day. And thank you for tuning in.